in our previous lecture we saw how the currents vary whenever a synchronous generator is short circuited on its terminals now during that discussion although it was not explicitly told that we are dealing with a round rotor machine but it was assumed that we are just first dealing with the round rotor machine that's why xs was used that is for round rotor machine there is no uh, direct axis or quadrature axis reactance there is one reactance which is usually called the synchronous reactance however when the machine is salient pole then we will have to clarify what this axis means we also saw what was the derivation for the expression for the symmetrical short circuit current for the generator now we will see when we will study the synchronous machine in detail during our electrical machine course that whenever we are dealing with the current which is actually 90 degree out of phase that is which is in quadrature phase of the induced emf then the direct axis reactance is used that is whenever let us say this is the induced emf whenever we are dealing with a current which is actually in quadrature phase with this induced emf then usually what we do we deal with the direct axis reactance so we have already seen that whenever a generator is short circuited at its terminals the current is actually very pure, uh, very close to the purely inductive current so the current is quite about 90 degree out of phase with the induced emf so for the salient pole machine what we use in place of xs we only use the direct axis reactance okay so x xs will change to xd xs prime will change to xd prime and xs double prime will change to xd double prime that is the this is the subtransient reactance transient reaction reactance and the steady state reactance to be used for those current which are actually out of nine quality that is which are out of about 90 degree phase with the induced emf now this is one part that is we are dealt with the symmetrical part of the short circuit current we have also know we have also seen in our uh, one of the lectures that there is also a dc part that is the current is actually composed of the natural response and the steady state response okay now in our previous lecture we assumed a case that we were dealing such that this alpha minus theta was giving us a value that this part was zero initially so we were dealing with only the symmetrical part of the short circuit current let us say we want to generalize it further that is we want to include the dc decaying part in the expression okay now we have seen in our, in our one of the previous lectures that this dc decaying part can have a value which is equal to the maximum value of the symmetrical part okay so you see this maximum value can go up to like up to this value and if i want to show only the rms thing then what i will write i will write it as root 2 times eg and this symbol represents that we are just dealing with the rms values as i already told in the starting of this course that we will usually use rms whenever we were dealing with the phasers okay so you see that this dc current can have a value 
which can be having this maximum value and when this at time t is equal to 0 the impedance given by the generator is actually the subtransient reactance okay so z will be changed to the subtransient reactance and this current will decay with time with the time constant which is depending upon the time constant of the armature winding because it is flowing in the armature winding okay so this is the expression for the, the dc current which is going to flow or it is actually the asymmetrical part so the final expression for the current will be it is root 2 times the iac the rms value of the symmetrical ac current into e minus t over tau a this thing this thing is nothing but root 2 times iac where iac is the rms value of the current symmetrical short circuit current plus iac sin omega t plus alpha minus theta now this expression is actually not a periodical expression but if you want to let us say try to stretch the concept of rms that is actually it is not the actual uh, that that will not be the actual rms value but if you want to stretch the concept of rms what i can write that the rms value of it it rms value can be written as i dc squared plus i ac rms value squared okay so putting on these values putting on these values in this equation i can find something which is quite equivalent to the rms value of the asymmetrical short circuit current technically it is not the rms value because it is not a periodic function but we are trying to stretch the concept so that we can somehow find some of, some of the equivalent values okay so what will happen this rms value uh, let me erase this and we will see in the next slide now let us see we will put the values here i rms we will put it here root 2 squared is 2 i ac rms squared plus and this thing this thing all multiplied by or raised to power 2 what will happen this will convert to minus t2 twice of t over tau a okay plus i ac rms squared this is representing the ac uh, rms part of this symmetrical short circuit current, current so i will take this rms symmetrical short circuit current outside and it can be written as 1 plus twice of e minus 2t over tau a now this expression is usually utilized when we are going to deal with the design of the earth mat or the earthing system of a power substation this expression is usually given in IEEE 80 okay so that's why I have tried to show this expression although it might not come in the exams but practically when we are going to deal with the design of the earth mat then this expression will be util utilized the RMS value of the fault current the this is the asymmetrical fault current now because it is also containing the DC part so this is quite equivalent to the RMS value of the asymmetrical fault current 
okay now in our previous lecture when we, we were closing the lecture uh, i told that we will also discuss why these have been taken as exponential decays that we will see in the next slide now on the board i have tried to show the envelopes of the subtransient part the transient part and the final steady state part now when we plot these decays that is when i plot delta i prime or delta i double prime on a logarithmic scale what we find that the decay is actually proportional to the time that is the decay is linear so what i want to say here is that that when i plot let us say this is a log scale this delta i can be delta i prime or delta i double prime okay so when i plot this with time then what i find that the curve is linear let us say this is the curve for delta i prime and the other curve will be more steeper this will be for delta i double prime now you see if the curve for these on a, on a logarithmic scale are linear then it implies that delta i prime or delta i double prime will be having a response similar to an exponential decay that's why from the oscillograph we found out that these terms are decaying exponentially so this is one of the reasons that we have taken this exponential decay term for the subtransient current and the transient current now there is also one very small thing we will although we will discuss this in detail when we will study synchronous machine in the electrical machine course but you should know that this dc current because this is a uniform direction current although it is decaying this dc current in the armature winding will create its own emf and that emf what will happen as we know that in a synchronous machine this rotor is having if the dc field current and this is rotating at synchronous speed and there is the armature winding on the armature now there is some dc current in the armature winding so what will happen this dc current is going to create a stationary flux with respect to the ground or the, with respect to the stator so this flux is actually changing with respect to the field winding because this field winding is rotating at a synchronous speed so because of this there will be induced emf at a synchronous frequency in the field winding also so we will study the effect of these induced emf when we will study the synchronous machine in details in the electrical machine course now in our next next lecture we will try to solve a numerical example for the fault on a terminals of a no loaded or the generator which is at no load previously and there is a short circuit on its terminals what happens that we will try to solve with a numerical example also so if you find that this lecture is helpful to you then please share and subscribe my youtube channel thank you